coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off I'm back at you in gloves off and today i have a great guest a leader in our community is uh he's coming up and he is doing wonders and Basically for small businesses, for veterans, and a bunch of other good stuff. His name is Ray Roach. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Professor? Professor? Good to see you again. It's a, it's a pleasure. pleasure. And um, let's touch base, because I've heard a lot of good stuff, but I want you to say it. So yeah, no, what's, um, what's in the works for 22? Again. Yeah, so a lot going on. Um, you know, I have uh, Rocha's Bar and Grill. It's a family-owned restaurant, so that's going really well. Um, finally seeing things, you know... Uh, improved quite a bit and now that we're on the the other end of the pandemic so that's been nice and just doing a lot of a lot of work for not just um, local small businesses but a lot of community activism work um, working with uh, a couple of nonprofits um, specifically the uh, there's a, a, a nonprofit we started called Genesis Light and currently we're working on a tiny home project um, to bring tiny homes or build a tiny home community here in Laredo for homeless veterans and our homeless population. Okay. So that's a, it's a great project and I'm, I'm very excited about moving forward with this and we have some, some support from the city, getting some support from state representatives and, and uh, really trying to push forward with this project. Well, we, ha- we have to, you know, we have to help them out because yeah. our veterans have been <clears throat> left behind kind of in the way. And they're the ones that actually give us our freedom. Mm-hmm. They fought out there, and they, they they gave us our freedom, and gave others in other countries their freedoms as well. And you know, we have to reach out to them and help them out. And mm-hmm. I think um, you know, this past week I was talking to you earlier of the Battle Line um, podcast, which is Chris Pronto and uh, and Ian and Scotto, and uh, Ian and I were talking about how can small businesses and help out the veterans. We need to. We need to reach out to them because they're they're with us every day, um, you know. And I told them, you know, here here at the school, we're going to start doing a campaigning for giving veterans a, a discount. You want to come in and work out? Here's a discount that you know you get, and it's going to be for all veterans. Period, because their their energy brings something in there. You know, restaurants can do the same thing. Oh yes. And every small every small business is doing great with that you know but the thing about what you're talking about yeah explain that and and like you said i think um community involvement is is key to to moving this project forward and anything uh with regard to uh to to the support that we can give back to our veterans locally um so i i think i think this project is going to move well we are moving forward i think it was a blessing uh we we had an opportunity to uh to team up with uh, Pastor Robles from San Antonio. And he is the, the individual who actually donated 50 tiny homes or will be donating 50 tiny homes to Laredo. These tiny homes were um, donated by veteran families. Um, so it, it's a, a true blessing to be able to team up with uh, Pastor Robles from San Antonio to bring this project here, here to Laredo. Absolutely. Um, I think Ultimately, what we're trying to do is not just bring tiny homes for veterans and the homeless population to Laredo. It's really building a, a real community. Um, it's not enough to, to, to shelter um, or, or house uh, our veterans um, and, and our homeless population, but you need to find a way to get them involved in the community. Um, so it's, it's a project that not only was going to be a, a, a housing, but actually having uh, this community be proactive in the community. So, you know, having a mechanic shop, um, you know, a garden, a greenhouse, having mental health care services, health care, a health care system, transit system. So I really, we're, we're really trying to do is really build an actual community where the veterans feel and the homeless population feel involved in the community. And I think the only way to really sustain that is to get the community to be a part of, of this project. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to build something like this. It's another thing to actually have the, all of Laredo be a part of this project. So that's, that's the goal, is to get everybody excited and enthused about this project and to have everyone involved, involved in it in the city. Absolutely. You know, and 
we all have uncles, we have cousins, we all, you know, I, I for one miss both wars and it's something that I wish would have maybe it wouldn't throw me in there, but mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I did not do to represent my country. But, you know, all of them, we thank you for your all services and we embrace you with that and we're here for you. We're yeah. here for you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about it and, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's more of a marathon, not a sprint, uh, with creating, with actually building this community, but we're definitely going to get there. I think the more people that are aware of what we're trying to do, the better off we'll be. Um, we have some state representatives that are on board. Uh, you know, city officials are, are on board, so I think um, I think the goal right now is to get as many Laredoans as possible to be a part of what we're trying to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When, um, on another note, um, I heard that you might be running. Yeah, so I, uh, I ran, a, a, you know, um, I think it was a little over a year ago. Uh, it was my first time. Uh, I was a write-in candidate, so that made it very difficult. I haven't been back very long, but... Uh, I think uh, you know it's it's not even it's not just a want it's more of, of an I feel it's necessary you know I think there's a lot of there are a multitude of problems in, in our city as as you're you're aware and many Laredoans are aware of the issues that we've had um, currently or in the last couple of years so I think I think at this point it's it's just a it's it's a it's a need to or necessary to really change. Um, the city internally, you know, I, I say this all the time. I know it sounds kind of terrible, but you know, this town needs an enema, so to speak. Uh, we really need a, we really need to clean, clean, clean the city up quite a bit, and not just physically, but figuratively as well. Like we really need to find a way to change um, our city politics. And uh, you know, again, I was gone for about twenty years, and coming back, uh, you know, there's been some change, but not enough. You know, you go to the valley, you go to San Antonio. Uh, there's some, you know, they've made huge strides in the last 20 years, and we haven't made not even close to, to the kind of significant uh, difference here as far as growth. And I think what the problem that we're having currently, and it's been a problem for a long time, is, 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 the, is, is how difficult it is to, for people to want to come to Laredo to grow Laredo, to develop here. Um, and I think that that's part of the problem, along with the nepotism and all the other issues that you see internally within our city. So, um, you know, I'm not here to call any particular person out. I, I'm really about facts and data. And, and you know, it, it it's, don't not know. Rock, it, it's not difficult to, to see the problem. You know, it's very easy to see the issues that we currently have. You see it every day. And uh, it's really coming, at, at the end of the day, not one person can change, can make significant strides. It's about you know finding a way to to bring unity and uh, and a real like team effort to really change change the city. Absolutely. Um, you know uh, I think it, how can you bring all city uh, or city officials to work together to 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 move forward? And uh, you know I, I don't see a lot of that. And I'm not saying that th there haven't been changes. I'm just saying there hasn't been enough changes. And and there's too much red tape and there's too many delays and. And uh, we need to find a way to, to really work together to, to, to grow Laredo. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. And, um, you know, what, what I see 15, 16 years ago, Laredo was the second fastest growing city in the nation. Mm -hmm. 20, uh, between 2000 to 2004 or 5, more or less, that's when it was the second fastest growing city. What happened? Right. What occurred? You know, they say, McAllen ate our lunch. No, they ate our lunch and dinner and breakfast, and they they're dating our girlfriend. She's <laughs> egg, our ex girlfriend. That's how far ahead they're they're yeah. ahead. Yeah. You know, Eagle Pass is is doing wonders. Del Rio was doing wonders. San Antonio's is taking their businesses. And you kind of stop and think, and you try to see what is going on. Mm -hmm. And what you see is you see a. It's not only there. You know, yesterday I had a had an uh, had a conversation with a. A lady, an entrepreneur here, who has who has a business, and her husband has a business, and they're contemplating moving back to where they came from. They came from the Dallas Fort Worth area. Why? Because their kids are being bullied. Because they're not from here. Mm. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? So, and I get yeah. and I get it. You know, I moved around. My father was was a physician. We moved around from from different cities, and of course, you're not from there. You're not from the hometown. You're you're gonna get picked on, you might get picked on, you might have to fight your way out of it. Unfortunately, that's the way life is. But she goes, it's not only with my child, it's with 
me and my husband as well. Mm. And I said, yeah. Uh, so now they're, they said, we're only going to give it to July. If this doesn't fix, we're going to move back. But you start listening to a lot of businesses that are moving away from that area. Yeah, yeah. Import-export companies, they're moving to San Antonio. They're moving to McAllen. They have this more as a hub just for the warehouses and move forward. But they're not here. The fa actual families are no longer here. Right. And people say, no, we have a great import-export. Yeah, but we're always going to have import-export. Right. I mean, we had it, you know, for the last 200 years, we've had import-export through here. A lot of things came through here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. From, from gold to cotton, from cotton to, to uh, liquor during Prohibition, everything, everything came through here, yeah. you know? And, and a lot of people say, you know, we're, we're not going to lose that. Of course we're not going to lose that. Right. We're located in an ideal you know, spot. So it's going to be there. But what about, the rest of, what about the rest of the, the industries that are here? There's no, there's no factories. There's no, here on this side, there's no big businesses that bring in manufacturing jobs that we need to support yeah. our, our people are moving out. And we're slowly, <clears throat> I'm also part of the Economic Development Advisory Committee for the city, and we are slowly seeing these big, bigger corporations or manufacturers coming into the city. But nonetheless, it's, we're talking, like you mentioned, import-export, right? Well, we, we're always going to have that, but what else do we have? Right, we have that and local small local business local small businesses, but we're not giving Laredoans more than just that. So I think it's about finding a way to bring more entertainment, different activities, different ways to really keep Laredoans happy here. Like you said, people are moving out, and that that's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we need to do from our from our end as a city to develop and bring certain uh, companies here to Laredo to to give people a better quality of life? Right, people move out because the quality of life isn't as good here as it is in other places. The valley, as you mentioned, is one of them. Uh, you touched on something about your the, the business of the people from from Dallas that moved here to Rado, right, and how they're bullied and kind of seen as kind of outcasted. And I think the issue there also comes back to finding a way to change the Laredo culture, not Absolutely. the Latino culture, which is amazing and beautiful. And right, the Laredo people culture. Love. It's, it's the Laredo culture that we need to change, right? It's people's mindsets. It's the way we think. It's the Absolutely. way we, we talk to each other. It's the way we act, you know. Those, those are the things Absolutely. that we need to change. And the only way that's going to change is if we find a way to work together, to, like, reach out across that, like, reach out and shake somebody's hand, right? Uh, so it, it is really changing kind of a, a, the mindset of, of most people here. And, uh, you know, you know right? going away 20 years, you come back and it's the same uh, as far as the way we think and the way we, we act. So uh, it, it is really just trying to reach out to, to, to people and finding a way to, to bring that kind of togetherness here, as silly as it sounds. But that's, what, that's what's going to change Laredo, is finding a way to really change our, our community culture. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, you know, and we have to do it. We, listen, I keep telling people, Laredo is going to protect Laredo. And I'm not talking about the municipality. Right. Or the governing body of Laredo. I'm talking about us citizens us. Us, us, that we have here. We're going to be the ones who are going to protect each other. And I saw that during during the crisis within COVID and the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Small businesses were united. You remember, mm -hmm. we're, yeah, helping right. other, put, put, yeah. we're, we're helping each other. We're helping each other survive mm -hmm. and those that could not adapt to that help just died out some of them could not because they were not financially fit or you know it was not something that we did our own problem like in other words i invested on this and all of a sudden with guess what if i went under or i say you know what i'm going to move to the to a bigger location because my business is doing so good so i'm going to move to a bigger location all of a sudden you move to a bigger location and you found out that you did not grow Right, you were growing where you were at, where you were at. Yeah. So people need to understand that, you know. So those are businesses. Those are business downfalls that were committed by the person. Mm -hmm. A lot of these businesses were shut down by the government. Right. And what I see from, what I see and what I kind of resent from, from the administration, actually, actually, Pete Pete Sines, our mayor, and his regime there, is. They never said we're sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. once did they say we're sorry. We destroyed your business. Yeah. How can we help you? Right. You know, they, they not, there was no help. Yeah, I think um, you know what I when you mentioned that I, the the things I think about are um, you know accountability 
and just and transparency. And I think when there's an issue, you know, if, if you were to go, to, I'll give you an example. If you go to Rochas, uh, and you order order a dish, um, and that dish isn't to your liking. Uh, maybe you ordered a medium rare steak and it came out well done. Um, ultimately, who who made that dish? My cook, or one of our chefs, one of our cooks made that dish. But I'm going to take responsibility for that mistake, right? I'm taking accountability for that. I'm going to try and correct it because it happened on my watch. It's my restaurant. So Absolutely. ultimately, I didn't do a good enough job. We did not do a good enough job to properly train that cook or to make sure that that dish was coming out to, to that customer's liking. Going back to the city, um, you know, if there's an issue with our water pipelines, if there's an issue with, uh, you know, our electricity or whatever it may be that, that's part of our city, you know, you can't just point the finger all the time at, at, at a particular person. You ultimately, as a city official, have to take accountability for that, have to take responsibility for that and say, you know what, I'm sorry that happened on my watch, that, that was on me, I'm going to do whatever I can to remedy the situation and fix it. But there isn't that, right? And that's, not that's that. a problem. But there would be so much more respect there if, if it was just, if you were just straight and upfront and forward and say, no, 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 I'm not going to point the finger at a director. I'm going to point the finger at myself because that, that's on me. I represent the city. I'm a public servant, and I made that mistake because it happened on my watch. Absolutely. And that's, that's, I think, what yeah, I think people want. They want to hear that, but they're not hearing that. Right. You know, they're, they're blaming everybody else. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, and, and, and we can go on and on with that, but the, I think that the city, the pro, what we're trying to get at here is that we are the ones going to help each other out. We're going to lend that extent, we're going to extend that hand to pick somebody else up because we know, we know their struggles. We've been there before. Yeah. And we have to, you know, keep on moving forward. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a good way. Do we have some good people that, that are in there? We've got some good-minded people that are in, in office right now, but I, if I see them frustrated at either the way things are run mm -hmm. in the city or the things that are not done, and they're so frustrated that they cause more problems than what they should have been. Instead of, you know, I told one of them, why, why don't you just get rid of them? I mean, the person's been there for 25, 30 years. Get rid yeah. of them. He's still causing the same problem he did 20 years ago. Right. So get somebody hired, hire somebody new. Oh, we can't do that because it's so-and-so's cousin. And? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I had somebody, like you said, if I had somebody that was in, in the job and I was an employee, you give them three strikes. After right. the third one, you talk to them and say, hey, what's going on? Do you need help with this? Do you need help with that? You know what? I'm going to change your job venue. Maybe you're not a good cook. Maybe maybe you can help us out as... as, as as being a, a wait, 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 we're gonna still have have the opportunity here. But if you can't do that, I'm sorry. Right, someone else should take Absolutely. should have an opportunity. And then what you mentioned about about that is it goes back down to not having a united front. Not show, there is not that sense of unity within all our city officials, and mm -hmm. and that's why it's difficult to see growth because ultimately. They do have to be united to move forward with any project or whatever we're, we're trying to do for the city. Um, and when you see that internal strife, it does, it is frustrating, and I'm sure it's very disappointing for for, more, for all residents to see that within our city government. So I think ultimately that's what that's really what needs to to change. Absolutely. Yeah. Like Absolutely. I said, not one individual can make can make significant strides here for the city. It, it's going to take a team effort. It's going to take. Uh, city officials to really unite and be able to move that forward. Absolutely, no, no, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent So, when would you let us know uh, about your decision? Yeah, um, probably here in the next couple of months, you know, I've been kind of, um, you know, looking at funding and talking to to certain people um, about about running, and I think, you know, like I said, it's not, I don't, you know, like I ran last time, I said, look, you, when. It, it's not about the money. It's about really wanting to see real change, real growth for the city. Um, you know, like I said when I ran the first time, I, you know, I, if I don't deserve that, I don't deserve a salary until I've proven that I've been able to do something positive for the city. At the end of the day, we're public servants, so what have, we're here to serve the people. Why am I getting a salary if I haven't done anything yet? Um, so if <laughs> if I don't feel I deserve that salary, the people can decide, right? Uh, again, this isn't about money. This is about really wanting to see real change for our, for our city. You know, we're, we're, we are growing. We're just not growing. Um, we're not growing fast enough, and we're not bringing in the right um, development and companies here to see that to see more job more job growth, right? To see some type of uh, activities or entertainment that keep people here. 
um, I think you know you hit the nail on the head. A lot of people are moving out, um, and that's 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 bad for our for our local economy. Um, so it, it is about finding a way to to incent not just incentivize people to want to be here, but finding a way where they actually like to be here, want to be here, whether they feel their quality of life is better here than somewhere else. Um, so, so I think, I think, you know, like I said, it doesn't take a team, but also we need to find a way to, and when we, we've found ways to incentivize growth here, but it still, it still costs anywhere between one to $2 more per square foot to build here compared to San Antonio or Dallas, right? So that's an issue. How can we find a way to solve that, that problem? Um, and so I, I will, I'm going to consider in the next couple of months and kind of decide, but regardless of whether I run or not. Um, I'm still going to continue to do what I'm doing, whether Absolutely. it's working with nonprofit, Absolutely. being a community activist, finding ways to bring businesses together to grow together. You know, I think there's a lot. There's this whole like uh, it's all know, about we're all piranhas here, right? Everyone's kind of out for the same blood, and it doesn't have to be that way. I think we, we do much better if we it's, work together. Than it's net separate. networking. It's yeah. networking with each other and understanding what each other's needs and what they need, and and pushing people that way forward. You know. Yeah. And that's what you know, and folks. You know, here in, in Gloves Off, we have a new new side show. It's called Eatery Biz, and, and a lot of folks don't know that. I'm an executive chef of, and by trade and, and by vocation. And uh, what happens is that I'm, I've am i been seeing a lot of restaurants out there, you know, and, and we're going to end up doing yours next week as well. And uh, they come out on Saturdays, but these are restaurants that are in town because people say, oh, there's no good food. There's plenty of good food here in Laredo. Yeah. Believe me, there's great food here in Laredo. Oh, yeah. And there's great restaurants here in Laredo. You just have to go out there and get out of your box. Start moving, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get outside the bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, and that's important, too. That's a, a good way to look at where we're at currently. It's, you know, it's okay to, to get, uh, to, to try to find a way to feel comfortable in, in or, you know, in uncomfortable situations. And I Absolutely. think definitely kind of, kind of coming out and, Trying new things is, is definitely a plus and something we need to do as a as a whole. So absolutely. Well, come back out and uh, let us know when you're going to run. Make we'll sure do. that we do. We we and uh, continue moving forward. And folks out there, get involved with your community, whichever way, whatever project. There's so many small businesses. There's so many not only small businesses. There's so many nonprofits that help out the community in many ways. If you want to go out there and help out, please do so because there's. A lot of great people out there helping our community, and they're being forgotten in some way. But we're we're not going to forget them. Yeah, every single nonprofit is essential, especially here. There's some that deal with youth. There's some that deal with education. There's some that deal with veterans. There's some that deal with health, and there's plenty of them out here. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of younger uh, generation, a lot of younger people doing a lot of great things on their own. You know, there's absolutely. this individual by the name of Genesis who has her own homeless project, and she's out there every weekend. Uh, you know, finding ways to, to help the homeless population, whether feeding or clothing them. There's there's so many ways to help our community. So I, I do encourage everyone to, to get involved with some nonprofit or people that are trying to really help our our our, our right ones. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll leave you with this. You all stay safe, be safe, and be well. Until next time. Thank Peace. you.